it's Becky. Welcome back to the second part of my core swatching video. Today I'm going to be looking once again at the earth colors, a set of six. As you can see in my previous video, I've already swatched out all of the colors and go and check that one out to see a much more in-depth review on each individual color. But today what I'm going to do is make a painting with all six of these colors and no others. Can I do it? I certainly hope so. I will be filming time lapse and I'll switch you over to voiceover now and I really hope you enjoy this painting. It's voiceover Becky and today I'm using my Etcher sketchbook. It's a size A4 and it has 100% cotton paper in a cold press texture which you can see there. I'm going to paint this picture next to the swatches so that you can sort of see them together later and very very quickly I'm just going to show you the tools and materials I've used here they are and really quickly there <laughs> getting my mechanical pencil and I'm wearing my black anti-smudge glove to stop my hands from spreading oil on the paper I'm drawing an Australian magpie which I've referenced off Pixabay and you can see I'm fixing its beak here because it wasn't quite right the first time I've left a link to the picture below so you can have a look at it and maybe draw it for yourself. It's not exactly perfect because I'm freehanding the picture here but it's close enough and it's a piece of art so it doesn't have to be a photo. And I just drew it till I was happy and then I've started rubbing out most of the pencil lines just leaving the ghost of an image underneath. And I lost a bit of footage, I'm very sorry about that. But what I've done here is I've wet the paper with water and now I'm spreading the colours on and just letting them run where they will. As you can see with the core watercolours in the Aquasol, they spread like crazy. And the sap green, which I said wasn't that spreadable in the swatching video, actually does spread a lot in this painting. So sometimes when you do a proper painting, that's when you really see how paints work. But I'm just adding pretty much all of the colours except indigo to the background here. I've had to wet the paper in stages because Melbourne is so dry at the moment and the paper just kept drying really quickly so I just did bits and pieces. Fortunately being 100% cotton it's very forgiving and you don't get that sort of tide mark line as long as you're quick with spreading. I keep going over the colours to make them stronger and stronger and build up the layers of colour. The paper is all still really wet and it kept actually taking multiple layers which was quite nice. I'm tidying up the edges here because it got a bit messy. Just making it look a bit neater here. And then adding a bit more colour. Here it dried completely overnight and I've re-wetted the whole area again. Um, the paint being mostly staining just doesn't move so it was really easy just to layer over the top of it. And as you can see the colour is really starting to build up now which is quite nice. It sort of looked a bit wishy-washy as this paper, as I've mentioned a few times, is very very thirsty. But now I'm getting that deeper colour, especially with the darker brown, and I did add a little bit of indigo just around the edges to mix with the brown and make a slightly blacker shade. But mainly I'm using the other five colours in the set to finish off this background and just add little patches. I tried to keep the top left a little bit lighter than the bottom right just to add a bit of a gradient and you can see I'm using some of that Naples yellow up here along with transparent brown oxide and the Venetian red and then a bit more sap green around the bird mainly. I've used the raw umber natural in the darker areas at the top right and the bottom right and now I'm starting on the magpie itself, which is the most nerve-wracking part because this is where the detail comes in. I'm wetting the paper to begin with uh, after I've left the background dry. And here you can see I've started in with the indigo. I'm basically pretty much painting the entire bird in indigo except for its eye, which you'll see later. And I'm just sort of laying in a base layer, taking out a little bit of highlight here and there and wetting the bottom of the paper and you can really see that indigo just streaking across the, the wetness on the paper. This is the ugly stage of the painting or the underpainting as I like to think of it. It just looks patchy and hideous. I'm just lightly painting over the beak as well and adding a little bit of darkness to the tip of the beak. And then I've just done a little bit of shading around the eye just to get the idea of where I'm going to place that later. 
And now we get to do another layer. Um, the paper was drying pretty fast, so that actually worked in my favor here because then I could just go on to the next layer quite quickly. And I'm just adding in a deeper layer of the indigo, just going around its eye. And yeah, just basically I'm trying to build up layers and detail in the bird's feathers. You can see it's quite dark around the base there and I'm also trying to keep that outline quite sharp around its beak and because that's how it looks in the photo and so I'm trying to stick as closely as I can to the photo but also leaving it a little bit looser so I'm not going to paint in every single feather or anything like that. I'm just spreading a bit of water on and then kind of letting the indigo paint just blend in slightly but not quite as much as I did on that first layer so I'm, I'm getting more of a hint of feather shape here and I'm leaving some areas lighter than others because there was quite a lot of light on the photo of the bird it's not just pure black and here you can actually see it looks pretty blue because that indigo is really splitting out into the thalo blue base that it has but I like that I think it's nicer than going pure black and I'm just adding in the feathers here and a little bit more detail around the edges of the white parts of the bird. Adding in a line for its beak which is probably a bit too much but I just wanted to make sure you could actually see that part and I'm just trying to add some more definition and shading into the beak itself. I will come back to it periodically because I need to let it dry so it doesn't smear in together especially the top part and the bottom part. You can see it's smearing here a little bit but that's okay because it adds to the natural sort of gradient of the beak. And then I started back on the eye, I decided to colour that in while everything else is drying and I've gone with the Venetian red here, taking out a small highlight and then I'm going in with a little bit of that darker raw umber so that more around the outside of its eye because it is quite a bit darker there and then just trying to blend that out. And now back to the feathers on the bird and as you can see I'm building up another layer. I did go a little bit too dark I think on the stripe, it's looking good here, but along this bit I think I made this bit a bit too dark compared to the rest of the head as you'll see in the finished piece. But it does look like that in the photo because there is light hitting the top of the head and just under its cheek area. So you do get that definition between the light and the dark on its feathers and I think values or light and dark are very important to give you interest rather than it being completely flat. And I'm just sort of adding in a general feather texture. I don't want to make it too detailed because I find you get bogged down and, and you either have to put in all of the detail or leave it just a bit looser and just add some of the detail and leave a bit for the imagination which is how I prefer to paint. I mean you can still see that it has feathers but it's not like you're having to paint in every single one and really watercolour is meant to be a lot looser. Finally I'm painting in that pupil which was kind of creepy when it wasn't there but now it's starting to actually look like a bird and I'm going back around finessing the edges of the painting on the background because there were a few little patches and they were driving me crazy just making it look a bit neater because I'm not using any outlines here I'm just going straight in with the paint I added a little bit of shading to that white area because nothing is ever purely white and I'm just working again on that beak to add more detail and now I'm just going around and fluffing around and sort of finishing the painting off by adding little bits of darker detail here and there and just making a bit more on the feathers. I'm actually quite happy with how this turned out. I really like the paints. Um, this is only six paints and it just shows that you don't need a huge amount of colours to finish a painting or indeed start one. You just sort of need to choose the right kind of painting to do. I'm just finishing it off with a little signature here and I'm all done. So this is the finished piece. I'm overall quite happy with it. I managed to use all of the colours quite easily actually because that background just lended itself to using the earth colours. The green was perfect, the sap green I really like it, and the different colours of browns and yellows. So that was really great and it's a very very Aussie sort of style of background. And then that's what actually inspired me to paint a magpie because I was thinking well what can I paint that's sort of a dark 
indigo colour and I was thinking, hmm, magpies are kind of black and indigo-y looking, so why not one of them? I'm quite happy with it. I think this line is a bit too strong and maybe I could do with another layer, but I just decided that I wanted to finish it before I start, you know, fiddling too much and messing it up because it's very easy to overwork a piece, especially a watercolour when you start adding too many layers and it starts to get muddy. So I thought, no, I'm just going to leave it. I'm happy with it. And overall, I think this is a pretty cool page spread. I'm sorry I can't quite fit the book in here without fully zooming out the camera and then you'll see the mess that actually surrounds the rest of my desk. But that was a pretty fun project. And I really want to do this again with the other set of six core colours I have that are the really bright and vibrant ones. So I will probably be doing that next week. And we'll see what I can get out of those. Because that's going to be a totally different set of colours. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any comments or suggestions or feedback, please let me know in the comments section below here. And also, I'd really love it if you can like my video and please subscribe so that you can see more of my content, which I will be uploading regularly in the next few weeks and months and hopefully years. <laughs> so I'm getting there. I thought this was really fun. I want to do more speed paintings. I really love them. I have a whole book here to fill. So, I mean, look at that. Hopefully we can do that in this year. We'll see how we go. Thanks again. I will see you real soon. And have a really great day. Swatch you later.